Hi, welcome to Live Painting at Noon. I'm Nettie Price, and I'm an artist from Reading, Pennsylvania. I create whimsical, vibrant, and fun sparkling art. And today, during the hour-long live stream, I'd love to share with you the final stages of a commission before it's ready to ship. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this time painting with me. I have to tell you that this is actually like my favorite time during the day. I really don't get to paint a whole lot just because there's so many other things going on, you know, whether it's traveling or going to shows and, you know, making art and prints down in my sparkling art sweatshop, which is also known as my basement. Um, <laughs> so um, I really, I'm glad that you're here with me. Hi, Jean. Yay, you're here. Jean actually commissioned me to do this painting. So this, these are the final stages. She saw a picture of it. And um, now it's kind of like, this is it. So uh, before we get started, if you'd like to see more artwork, you can go to nettyprice.com. It's in the comment section below. And I have a bunch of shows coming up. There's three big ones, two in Frederick, Maryland at the Maryland Christmas Show. And I, I will also be at the Bizarre Bazaar. I hope, um, I hope they got my money in time. Yeah, that's in Richmond. And then I'm also planning a painting party I'm here in Reading, Pennsylvania, and I'm almost sure where I'm going to have it. It's going to be at a really cool restaurant. I will let you know as soon as I know. And the dates for that will be um, either December 17th or December 18th. I'm not sure. Hopefully we'll find out soon. But the tickets will be available on my website at nettyprice.com under um, painting party tickets. So... Let's get started. And thank you for being here. I'm gonna pull it up on um, Facebook so I can see your comments. And then I'm gonna flip the camera around and let me know if uh, this doesn't sound right to you because I have some music on in the background. There's Jean, hi, and Heidi. Hi Heidi, how are you? I cannot wait. I am planning my Florida trip. I applied to a bunch of shows. Hopefully I'll get in and then I'll have my plan um, but I will definitely be in Fort Myers Beach on, I think the 25th, but of January. So that's that. So let's get started. I'm going to flip you around. So hold on. You're probably going to see my big old hand and I'm going to get you. Here we go. Okay. Yay. There they are, Jean. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna work a little bit more on the collars because they are a really furry, furry bunch. And I am going to put their names in the tags and just, you know, go through and clean up everything and make sure that it is um, ready to roll. So like I said, this is the final stages of the commission. So I'm gonna take you up top. Hello, Emily Jane, how are you? If you can see me now, I am on top of a ladder and there's my sophisticated system of a paintbrush holding the phone and I'm not going to talk so loud. Okay, so I'm plugging you in and I'm so glad you guys are here. This is so much fun. Alrighty, so these are the three beautiful dogs and I am going to... Get their picture. <laughs> I am. What you doing? Okay, so I think I'm gonna kind of zoom it in a little bit more just so you can see more of the painting. And we'll go from there. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so I did, because they're really furry, and, um, hi David, how are you? <laughs> That's my wave. All right, so here we have the three dogs, and if you're familiar, I do a black line first. So when I sketch it out, this is kind of what it looks like for those of you who haven't seen my art before. Um, it's just a black line. So here's a little picture of a puppy on a little mini original. Um, oh, great, Jean. I'm so happy that you love it because, you know, I, I remember with Ben, my dog, 
Then he was a Roddy and a Lad mix. And he was like so special to me. And to have something to remind me of him is so dear to my heart, especially if what reminds me, it makes me feel love and happiness. So that's the whole goal with my art, you know, with the colors and with the style. And I know that, you know, it's, it's, I try to make it as endearing as possible. So, um, I kind of got off track there a little bit, but anyway, if you, um, I'm just really glad that you love it, Jean. I'm talking to the phone and I hope you hear me. So <laughs> this is the first stage. So I do the black line and it's really just a map. It's a sketch. And, um, then I do layers of color and I tighten up the black. So with a furry animal, I do the brush strokes so that they're into the black and they, they're very wispy and feathery. But then after that dries, yes, I do use a Sharpie marker, which is a whole lot of fun. And I'm just going to go through and it doesn't have to be bold, but it's to connect everything together. And I think the reason why I like the black line so much is that it's very clear. You know, the, it allows the separation between colors to be clear so that you can really enjoy looking at each section kind of like on its own. Like if you were to take the heart by itself, I think that's cool to look at with all the different colors and the, and the bold line and even with the, you know, each, each individual dog. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of touch it up a little bit. I don't want it to be too bold. Otherwise, it'll take away from the painterliness of it. I mean, I really love to have brush strokes and, and lots of variation in color. So I'm just gonna tighten it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go and get, um, here we have their pictures. So Amber is the first one, Jill and Hope. And I'm gonna do the tags. And the collars are a little bit different. If you notice in the pictures, you can't really see the collars because their hair is so dark. So I just did a section of it because it didn't look right just to have the tag hanging like it really looked like in reality. So I'm just gonna kind of outline the tag. I want to delineate the, the collar and then I'm going to go over top of the collar. So with this one I'm going to take some a thin brush. So here we have a really thin brush that I'm going to dip in the water and because I, I want a really light brush stroke. And going over here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the white, and she's like an auburn. So we're going to use pretty much all four colors, white, brown, red, and yellow to make an auburn color. And now what I want to do is go over top. Now because it's pretty much like a single hair, it has to be really not watery, but it has to be thinner than normal because I don't want to have to keep going over it. So I'm just going to go over it really lightly. And then it's going to make it as if the collar is like under the hair. So I'm going over top of it again with each brush stroke coming down really lightly. I don't have enough paint on my brush so I'm going to get some more. Oh Heidi! I'm glad my art makes you happy. It makes me happy. And that's all that matters. I really don't. I get a... The comment I get the most is Oh, this would be, this is so cute, it would be perfect for kids' rooms, which I think is great, and I love that, but 
I really, I don't even have children, so it's just about happiness, and I think that people, they equate childhood with happiness, and really, I don't know, I think everybody should have more of that in their life. So I'm coming down, and going over. And I may have to do a couple layers just because it is thinner, because I did add some water to it, which is okay. But notice how, you know if you can see, the fur coming down, it's not as um, pointed as I want it to be. So I'm going to get another brush, and I don't really, I try to keep my brushes fresh so that if I need to change color, I just grab another brush. I have so many brushes though, because I do the classes, so I have a ton of brushes. And I, oh, there we go. This is much better because it's, we're coming down to individual hairs here. We're down to the hair. So I'm going over, and I'm gonna go over top of the, um, the collar, and I'm gonna try a new song here. I hope you like it. Here. I'm going to blend it in because I don't want to just have those hairs right there. I'm painting hairs. I love it. This, just this right here, it's amazing with art how you can say so much in such a small area. Even though I didn't paint the whole collar, this right here shows how furry she is. So. That's what I love about art, is that it, you can really interpret the way you want something to be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the reality of it. You know, you can kind of make it up, make it up as you go. So I'm gonna extend the hair out. I'm using a really light brush stroke. And now I'm going over to the side. Amber is just such a pretty dog. Look at her face. This is what I really loved about her is that, you know, just the shape of her ears and her eyes, she looks at you like she's looking into your soul. That Amber dog. So I'm going to keep going over. I'm going to have to do another layer of that. So I'm going to take that same color, but as you can see, Jill is a lot lighter. She's more golden. So I'm going to add some more yellow to that same brown base. Just using my brush, mixing it up in there. Now normally when I paint, I try to mix it on the canvas, but because we're at such a late stage in the game, I really want a color match. So I'm going to go in here. I think this is a good color. And now I'm going to do the same technique of each individual hair and go over the collar to make it look like it's underneath their really thick coat. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but it does have to cover because that's what it does, what hair does. And like this is the same thing too. I'm gonna have to do another coat. So I'm gonna use this same color and kind of go into other areas of the fur to add some continuity to this color because your eye looks at color and kind of puts it together. So I want to spread this out a little bit more. Just fine details. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the third one and she is like white with really subtle undertones. So I really like this brush. I'm going to get the most paint out of it. This one I will reuse just because I really like the way it, it's working for me. And that's another thing, like in the painting classes, if I think people are so focused on, you know, using the paint that they are really uncomfortable with the brush. If you're uncomfortable with the brush, get a new one. Trade it in, man. Don't suffer. Don't suffer with the bad brush. All right. So now we're going to go over here. I'm just going to use straight white just because I can go over it. I know I'm going to have to do another layer. So I'm going to come down and Jill has more 
um, stiffer hair, so it's straighter. So I'm not going to do as many curves, but I am going to come over top and go around the side of the. See how cool that looks? It's it just brings it together, you know, the tag. And it's, it's more about creating the first layer and then working on top and top and top, um, top layer by top layer. So I'm gonna let that dry. The next stage is I want to do the tags. Now with the tags, when I do personalization, I usually take, um, ooh, where is my pencil? Okay, so the first one's name, is Amber, and Amber, A-M, I'm gonna move this up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I usually write it out, and go right here, A-M-B-E-R. So you wanna get the middle layer, or the middle letter, so B is in the center. And it's so funny, because when I'm at shows and I'm personalizing and I start with the middle layer, they're like, no, no, you're not supposed to write. Okay, I'm gonna get it, I'll get it right. So what I'm gonna do is center in the middle. I think what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little bit more just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then, hey Dawn, how are you? Thank you so much for Saturday. That was really fun. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And then I can do the next one. I have very sophisticated um, camera set up here. It's a PVC pipe and a rain gutter and a paintbrush. All right, there we go. I think you can see it better now. So Amber has five letters. I'm gonna put the B in the middle and Normally I don't pencil this out, but I don't even know if I can this time. I'm gonna put the B in the middle and then work my way out either way. So let's get, gonna, I want it a little bit smaller and I kind of visualize how it's gonna look and I want the B to be in the middle. B, E, R, and then A, M. I'm gonna go up, down, up, down, and then the A. So I do it really lightly, and that's how I write it out, from the center over and then from the center back. Now I'm gonna go over it another layer to really make it nice. And I just use a straight font, it's not anything fancy, but it's consistent, and I think that's another um, thing with letters is that it just has, it's the consistency that counts. It's really not how ornate they are. Um, it's just that they all look the same. So the next one is Jill, J-I-L-L. -L. So there's no letter that's in the middle. So I'm going to go to the center of the tag, right here, and then go over just a little bit and do the LL, L, L, and then the over a little bit and do the I, and then the J. And it's very light, and I'm going to go over it a second time with the Sharpie. It's important that your Sharpie is sharp so that you can really have control over the, the line. And I'm just gonna clean up this chain here, a little part where it comes down and go around the outside. So there we have Jill, yay. And the last one is Hope, and Hope is a four letter word. <laughs> hope is a four letter word. And I'm gonna do the same thing with hers. Now notice how the 
the tilt. This was up and down. This one's pretty much up and down. This one's on a tilt, so I want to have that one kind of go with it. It's perpendicular to the axis of it, and that's just the way this one worked out. So I'm going to clean up the chain here, go around the side, and then it's H-O-P-E. I'm going to move over, go to the center, go over a little bit. Go in midway and center it with the P. Go real lightly, P, E. And now I'm gonna go over with to the left with the O and the H. There we have it. Now I'm gonna go over it again and then just make it a little bit darker. And I always stable my hand. I set it down here so I don't shake. And when you're focusing, it's almost like really just focus on the tip of the pen hitting the canvas. And then you have more control over your hand. All right, there we have it. Now we're gonna do another layer of the fur to go over top. This should be dry. Um, but now that I have the Sharpie, I'm just gonna um, go over the eyes a little bit more. I love putting eyelashes on my animals, and I got that from my mom. You know, my mom does artwork. She used to be an art teacher uh, before I was born, and she would always draw me pictures and put on eyelashes. So I got that from my mom. And then I'm going to go over the eyelashes a little bit. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pull it down so you can see. And I kind of don't want to get my head in the camera, but I guess I can do my other one. Now notice if you look at the picture, what I did before I got to the end was the highlight. This is a really important part of creating depth. If you don't have that, if you don't have these white dots, that is the final piece of when light hits an object, is that tiny reflection. If you look in the mirror, when there's a direct light on your eye, you can see one. So it's really important with these that number one, they're in the same spot of the eye. So if you look at the center portion where the, I'm gonna pull it up a little bit for you. If you look at this as a shape on its own, the highlight is in the upper right hand quadrant. It's really far north on the quadrant, a quadrant meaning, you know, the north, south, east, west axis. And the same over here, if you take this as a shape on its own and this dot is in the same spot of the quadrant because the light comes in and the eyeballs are the same shape and the light's going to reflect at the same point. The same thing with the nose. So. When you're doing the highlights, make sure that you have it on the same spot on each eye and then the, generally speaking the same spot on the nose. And that little white dot will make any form, like make it 3D. That really says a whole lot. So then I'm gonna just clean up down here and there's a little bit, the whiskers are good. I'm gonna move over here. And look at her little face. Look at that little face. How sweet. I love it. She's so cute. It's like when I paint these animals, I just want to keep them for myself. <laughs> the animals. Alright, so now we're going to do another layer of the hair. So I want to get my favorite brush. And uh, I'm going to do the white because then I'm going to do the white first and then add the, the light to dark. And here we go, Hope, here's some more. Another layer. What's the most important part is this line. Let me bring it up again. The line, the top line right here of the, of the collar needs to have hair over top of it. Not so much at the bottom because we wanna see the collar but it's really important to have it up here at the top to soften that line 
so that it like the collar is like right up and under the fur. So I'm gonna do a couple more layers and get in there with my paint and just soften up the black. All right, now I'm gonna do the next one. So I wanna go back to that light brown that I had from the last time and do the same thing. I wanna really soften that line at the top of the collar and then wisp it down on the second layer and you'll see that it's gonna cover the black. And I think that's what I, you know, it, acrylics are kind of like in the middle of oil paint and watercolor. Watercolors can be pretty difficult sometimes to control and because they're so spontaneous and you pretty much have a once and done. And oils are so far on the other spectrum where, you know, it takes so long for them to dry, they stink. And literally they stink. They don't, not like they're bad, but they, they smell bad in the turpentine. And the colors can get muddy. So that's why I like acrylic paints because it's almost like you have the best of both wor worlds. And if you add a glaze or a varnish, which I'm going to show you that too, you can really create a depth in the color that you get with oils. And granted, not as much, but still, you know, I'm doing this for my happiness. <laughs> I want to. I want to paint it and go and I don't want it to be toxic and all that crazy stuff. So this needs a little bit more red. I'm going to put some more red in there because amber is amber. There you have it. So there we go. I'm coming down, I'm making this, this line and I'm going to Try another song. I love having music when I paint. It's like part of a part of the deal. Okay. There we have it. I might do another layer of that of the fur before the time is over. Okay, so now the next part is we have all the eyelashes done, the highlights are done. The black is really tight. I personalized it. I kind of softened up the collars, which see how much of a difference that made with the collars if I would have left that, um, just that shape. So now it just, it really brings it together. I'm gonna do the heart. So I put white dots and I am going to, uh-oh, put sparkles. However, we have an emergency. Emergency? I left my sparkles downstairs. So, all right then. I guess I'm not. I will though, I promise. I'm gonna put sparkles on the heart. And then the next step is, when I first started, I did the sides in black with a big brush. Now I'm gonna do it one more time because I really wanna clean up where I have the, the brush strokes that come around the side. And it's really gonna make a big difference um, finishing it off. So I'm gonna take a big flat brush. This is pretty much the biggest one I have here. So I'm just gonna use this one. I have a black paint in a little container and I'm gonna tilt, tilt it up and do a really light stroke just on the edge to clean up the, the gallery wrap of the canvas. Now when you paint the sides a color or you paint it black, you don't have to frame it. And plus I wanna do just another coat so that it's a nice deep dark black and it looks finished. This makes a big difference. It's amazing how when you paint, you can be very almost careless in certain stages of painting where, you know, like in here, you're just very flowy and put it on and let it go. And then there's other parts of the painting where you have to be really precise 
and very delicate and control the brush and make it clean you know and this is part this is one part of it where you really have to have control um, the eyelashes and the, the, the outline that that's more controlled as well so I'm coming down I'm getting this side I'm going to do another layer of the black and then when you go against the edge it's almost like you have to create an angle of the canvas and then lift up as you hit the edge because you don't want the paint to go onto the front of the canvas because it's black and it's not good if you're going to ruin the colors that are on the background. So I did this side and I'm going to come around. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Um, I see a bunch of you are there. I'm so glad you guys are here. This is so much fun. It's fun to, you know, have it out there. This is how I do it to see the process. I went over and if you saw on Facebook, I, I hung the big commission for Freddie and Jill over um, in Why Missing and I painted their five dogs on wood. It was such a cool painting. I just love doing that one. Um, but I was talking to Freddie and he's like, yeah, you know, it's people like to see the process. They just like to see um, how it comes about. It's not like, you know, there's going to be any great learning here or uh, earth shattering thoughts or anything like that. It's just fun to see something grow. You know, it's kind of like watching flowers grow and, and coming back and seeing how much they've changed and how it got there. And I don't know, maybe flowers wasn't the best <laughs> analogy, but you know what I mean? Like you just watch things as they progress and, and see that it's real and that somebody's doing it. And you know, I'm here, it's a great day. The sun's shining sky is blue and I'm going to go out and go for a walk after this and then I have to go to the dentist which I'm glad I can go to the dentist but still that's not really what I want to do I actually really hate the dentist but I want to have healthy teeth so I'm gonna go so I'm gonna go over this side and that is it for that. Now what I'm going to do after this dries, I'm kind of at the point where I can't really do anymore because um, the sides are black and it's going to be drying. But what I will do after that is I'm going to take, there's two different kinds of varnish to protect the acrylic paint and also the varnish um, really deepens the colors and makes everything a lot more vibrant. So what I'm going to use for this is um, Liquitex Professional Gloss Medium and I'm going to do a layer over top of the painting and I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I'll do it that way. Yeah, I'm going to do an, a layer of this. So I'm going to do the sparkles. I'm going to do another layer of the hair like I showed you. I'm going to do the Liquitex and then I'm going to do the hanging hardware on the back. So I will finish that up today. And Jean, thank you so much for letting me keep your painting so that I could use it for this video. It's so much fun. It's really cool to have, you know, like the first stage. And then I also, I'm going to make a, you know, like a compilation video to kind of show you how it is. So let's see. It's 1234. We still have some more time. So what I'm going to do is put this and set it aside. So goodbye, girls. Amber, Jill, and Hope. It's been fun. I'm going to take this one and wait see now it's wet but that's okay and I'm gonna get this other one now this other one is all right I'm coming over this other one is on wood and I'm gonna just pick this up there we go I'm gonna move it over here and then this is going to be a fun one for Florida. So I'm going to be leaving in January. I'm going to move this. I'm going to be leaving in January to go to Florida for four months. There we go. All right. So this one is a 32 inch round painting. 
and okay, I think that looks good. It's gonna be a sunset, sunset on wood. I did the black, and with this one, I don't know, I kinda think it would make a really cool clock, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do the painting part, and um, the first thing that I wanna do, I'm gonna do the border, the border going around, and it's gonna be a colorful sunset with the beach and the palm tree. So the first thing, I wanna lay out the edge, because the edge is gonna be like a, a mermaid scale, and I wanna make it, I think I'm gonna make it green and blue. So I'm gonna take blue. These are deco color. They are opaque paint markers. And I'm gonna use this, gonna shake it up. I'm gonna use this as a border so that I can really be, um, have like a guideline of where I'm gonna go. So these are, these are really cool, I love them. Let me get some of the ink. And then what I'm gonna do is just use my hand to make a circle. And I want it, I wanna leave enough. I'm just gonna do it fake, like not really touch it down because I wanna make sure that there's enough black on the other side. So I'm just going around. I have, I've measured in my hand where I want the pen and we're good. So I'm gonna put it down here and now I'm going around. And I'm gonna turn it and go around. And my hand is staying on the wood. It's not moving, it's just the wood's moving around and around. So, I'm keeping the same distance from the edge. And I'm just real light with the pen. And I'm gonna go all the way around because then I'm gonna do another line to go around. And I wanted to make it as close as I can. I might have to actually do the black again, but that's okay. No worries. Now I'm hoping I'm gonna get hit the same line. And if I don't, that's okay. Kinda. All right, so there I've traced it out and I want to do like a mermaid scale. So I'm gonna get the green, maybe I'll use the blue. And I wanna use, have the black in between and it's gonna be a pattern. So how I'm gonna do this is, I think I'm gonna do one, two, three. I'm gonna come down about a third of the way and then do this all the way around, leaving a little bit of black in between. So I'm just gonna do a few just so I can show you. Here we go. Now. And I'm gonna save that for later. And then this is the next layer of the scales. And I'm gonna leave some black in between. And I don't really want them to be, um, I don't want them to be, I want them to be varying. So I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer so you can see. Oh, Jean, your lunch is over. Well, I'm gonna ship them out to you. Um, soon as they're dry, so tomorrow or the day after. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so now can you see it? I'm doing these scales, which this is something new. I've never done this before. So I'm trying it out. This is something 
that I think would look really neat. And then I'm gonna come down here and have this one as the third layer. So I'm gonna do this all the way around the palm tree and then fill it in. So I'm not gonna do that all now because that'll drive me nuts. And the way I start with um, this part is I'm gonna do the palm tree. I'll get my, like a medium to small pointed, it has to have like a point on it. And I want to do just the first layer of yellow to do the palm tree. And I'm going to add a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. And if, the first thing are the coconuts. So the coconuts are here. And they're like oblong shaped. And I'm going to come around. And I think I have another one right here and this is just the first layer this is to to put it out and I think I want to do I'm going to do one right here and one right here just a little one all right now I'm going to do the palm leaves which what I do is I start in the middle and come out with the line. And then I'm going to do each frond like that out from the center because that's how it grows. We have it. And I'm going to go over and do this one and bring it down because sometimes they like droop. There we go. Coming out to the edge and I want to have a nice thin tip. Same thing over here. I'm just going to go in more. do another one this one's going to come up and I think I want it to go out so I'm going from the inside out and then bringing the paintbrush up let's push this over a little bit out and down And then come down and do this one. So with this one, I just, um, with the painting, I do layers. This is the first layer. And I want to have some of the black still behind it. And sometimes when palm, palm fronds grow, they're kind of angular. They're not wispy. So I'm gonna get some a little bit of brown and make a light brown. And here is, I'm gonna put a little bit up here. And then the, these kind of are really, not gnarly, I don't know what the word is but I'm, I'm using a lot of different pressure to create a wavy kind of line. So I'm gonna come up here and do that again. And come down into the root that goes into the sand. So this is going to be the water and here's the sand, and, or the wave, this is the wave and then the still water in the back and then the sand up front. So here, I'm gonna just 
do the sand and cutting close to the tree. Now this, the brush stroke can be really thick and very loose. I'm going to add some brown in there so that uh, coming down and I'm just getting it on there. I want to come close to this blue line that I drew and bring this up closer and add some the paint's really thick. I'm coming in real close to that blue. And here we have the edge, which I'm gonna do some more white effect here, because this is kind of where the foam is coming into the sand. And I wanna have some darker under layers, so I'm gonna do some up here. Come close to the blue line. And then go around. I'm really excited about this part. That's going to look really cool because it's going to sparkle. It will sparkle. I'm going to put some lots of sparkles on that. Now we're up underneath the base of the root of the palm tree. So I'm going to put some darker colors in there. And... layer on top of that like this so the this sand is pretty brown but that's okay because this is just the first layer and i'm just dipping it on the paint i'm gonna pull it here so you can see it and coming down and there we have it Okay, this is just the first layer, so works out pretty good. Now I want to do the sun. Now typically I do black in between the rays, but for this one I'm not gonna. And I like this brush, so I'm gonna keep it. And I'm gonna do yellow anyway. So I want to do the inside of the sun, do a yellow layer. And then maybe I'll do a couple rays. And I have a pencil line. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. But I'm trying to keep inside the pencil line. And then I'm going to use the tip of the brush to kind of do the side there. Okay, here we have it. Now I want to do a couple rays. I think I'm going to do uh, one here, one here, and... Maybe one here. I think three is going to be enough. So I marked them off. I'm going to turn it around so that it's easier to do the straight line. And I'll put it here. And it's going to be just yellow and white. So I want to come in here and really try to. Sometimes, like, I'll hold, I'll hold my hand. I'll hold my own hand. I'll hold my arm so that I can keep steady. And then I'm going to go in. I want to keep the black for the palm tree. And I'm going to cut it really close. So I'm getting up in there. And I'm coming up to the edge there. Get some more paint on my brush. And then do, this is going to extend all the way to here. So this is going to be the first layer. And there's going to be many, many, many more layers after this. This is not a once and done kind of thing. Sometimes the paint comes off of these paint brushes. So I'm getting it off. And here we go. I'm gonna get some different music. OK. 
coming in really close. And then ease that out. We only have about 10 more minutes, so I'm gonna zoom in real close. You can see more. And then come down. And this line extends all the way over. Oh my gosh, this brush. So I'm coming down. Back here. And we get into here, so the line is coming this way. And here we go. Now I want to make this a little bit more even, so I'm just going to go over top of it and then kind of go over another layer. So I'm going to do one over here, switch this around so that you can see. And I'm going to get some more paint. This one's going to be really easy because it, there's no palm tree. And I want to have it a straight line. It's kind of like my style is to do these sun rays that are straight. This is going to be the first time though that I am not doing the black line in between. So we'll see how it looks. And I'm cutting it in close and I want to get the, the paintbrush in the corner. So I'm going to turn it and then go up and come down. And then over here, coming around, I don't want to, I'm not going to be worried about it if I go over the blue, it's just a kind of a guideline, because I can clean it up. The markers are really forgiving. So I want this layer to be nice and even. I'm going to put some more on here. I want to make this a perfect shape. So then I have one more ray in yellow. Then come out. Like that. And then come around and get into those corners using the tip of the brush to make the corner easier. And take it a little bit slower so I have more control. And there we go. That's that. Swing it around. And I think because I have the red on here, I'm gonna do like a, like an orange. I think I'm gonna do an orange ray and an orange ray there. So I'm gonna get over here, get some of my paint, get some red in there, and some yellow. It's a good color. Kind of get it in there. Maybe I'll add, other yellow or orange because I like it really really bright so there I put some more orange on there to really brighten up the color and now I'm going to do I think I'm going to do this ray and this ray I'm going to come out here and try not because the paint's still wet. 
And now I'm taking it really slow so that I can get as close as I can. It's a lot easier when you have the paintbrush tilted down rather than straight perpendicular. So I'm going to turn it so that it's easiest for me to come out and to go against the edges. And then I'm coming this way. And this is the first layer, so it's okay. I'm turn it some more and get into that corner because I want to make it straight and cutting into the blue. And then out. So we're coming to an end, and I hope you enjoyed this time together. I hope it was fun watching painting. And if you want to see more, go to my YouTube channel, nettyprice.com. Oh, no, that's my website. <laughs> uh, my YouTube channel is Nettie Price Sparkling Art, and that's where I have all of these Facebook Lives, um, more videos on tutorials on the Sparkling Art Mobile. Um, if you are in the Reading area or in Oaks, come and visit me November 2nd and 3rd at the Tiny Homes Expo, Tiny House Expo, which is gonna be really cool, really excited. So I'm gonna take this off here and I hope to see you all soon. We're gonna come down. This is gonna be the new, let's see here. There we go. So this is the beginning of the new Sunray the palm tree on the beach. It's gonna be on a 32 inch wooden round. And I hope you have a great day. Everybody take care and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye.